On November 29, 1981, Natalie Wood drowned off the coast of California's Catalina Island at age 43. The Academy Award-nominated actress had starred in some of the most popular films of all time, and even more amazingly, she was one of the few actresses of her era who successfully made the transition from child star to well-regarded adult actress. She worked with legendary directors like John Ford and Ilya Kazan. She had a fling with Elvis Presley before tying the knot with actor Robert Wagner. She was living the American dream. That dream, however, quickly turned into a nightmare. And it all happened over the course of a single weekend. The night before her body was found floating off the coast of Catalina, Natalie Wood had been aboard a yacht named Splendor in the company of her husband Robert Wagner, famous actor Christopher Walken, and the boat's captain Dennis Davern. But at some point in the night, Natalie Wood went missing. Though it was initially classified as an accident, Wood's death certificate would ultimately state that she died of drowning and other undetermined factors. It remained this way for decades until 2018, when her then 87-year-old widowed husband officially became a person of interest in Natalie Wood's death, prompting some to ask, did Robert Wagner kill her? Looking back on the case, things don't seem quite as simple as an accidental drowning. In fact, the yacht's captain, Dennis Davern, admitted as early as 2011 that he left out some key details about what really happened on that fateful night in 1981. For starters, Davern said the weekend was filled with arguments between Wood and Wagner, largely stemming from the clearly flirtatious chemistry between Wood and Walken. Walken and Wood had spent hours at a bar on Catalina Island before Wagner showed up, and he was angry right from the start. Later, the three of them, along with Davern, went to grab dinner. At some point during the meal, either Walken or Wagner threw a glass at the wall, and then around 10 p.m., the group decided to head back to the Splendor. Walken also admitted to having a small beef with Wagner, though it seems the issue stemmed from Wood being away from her family for prolonged periods of time due to her shooting schedule. Initial reports said the argument fizzled out towards the end of the night, but Davern suggested otherwise, saying that Wagner broke a wine bottle over a table and threatened Walken with it, asking if he was trying to sleep with his wife. Davern said he heard Wood and Wagner continue to fight into the night before, as he put it, everything went silent. When Davern went to check on them, Wood and the dinghy were gone, and Wagner turned to him and said, Natalie is missing. And that was just the beginning. You're listening to History Uncovered, brought to you by the digital publisher All This Interesting, where we explore the uncharted corners of the natural world and the world past. I'm All That's Interesting staff writer Austin Harvey. And I'm All That's Interesting staff writer Kalina Fraka. And today we're discussing the disappearance and possible murder of Natalie Wood. I don't know much about this. I've I've heard her name in relation to like other stories and like like Hollywood sort of like scandals and stuff, but I'm excited to learn more today. Yeah, I was not super familiar with her either. And then I saw a picture of her and I was like, oh, I do know who she is, oh, kind of. From like um, films or? Yeah, from mostly from uh, Miracle Mi- Miracle on 34th Street. Oh, She okay. was young in that, but mm-hmm. she was born Natalia Nikolaevna Zakarenko to Russian immigrant parents, if there was any question about where that name came from <laughs> in San Francisco. Um, and basically from a young age, her parents were like, she's going to be famous. Let's get her to Hollywood. So obviously they, you know, used the stage name Natalie Wood, Americanized. She started acting at age four. So wow. she was like very young, which especially at that day and age, uh, <laughs> you know, early black and white Hollywood was not a good place for children. Mm, Still yeah. really isn't, but definitely not back then. But she began her career as a child actress. She rose to prominence with films like Miracle on 34th Street. You know, a story as old as time uh, or as old as Hollywood, at least. Her mother manager was very overbearing. And that caused a lot of problems when she was young. Mm. Um, And and that's what I mean. Like, we see that same thing. Uh, Jeanette McCurdy recently oh, yeah. released her book i'm glad my mom died right i was writing something about aaron carter the other day and how his mother manager was very controlling and overbearing britney mm-hmm. spears you know not hollywood but hollywood adjacent yeah um, happens again and know. again and again yeah when you have these parents whose kids get really 
rich and then they become the breadwinner. Jojo Siwa, a more like modern example. I can't say I really know who that is, but that's okay. I believe <laughs> she you. Was the, <laughs> she was the Disney girl. She always had the big bows and the sparkly. Oh, she's like goth now or something. Yeah, she's yeah. like she's like edgy now and she's like dream guest on my podcast. Oh uh, boy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. She's, huh. It's, you know, the parents benefit financially from it and whatever. So mm-hmm. child exploitation, big issue in Hollywood needs to be addressed, but that's not what this episode's about. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it, it, she was one of those rare, uh, this is the other thing you see a lot with child actors is like, they don't always successfully transition into being an adult. Mm-hmm. Jojo Siwa being a, a tamer example of that, where she's not like Amanda Bynes, where there's a lot of like mental health issues, substance abuse, things like that. But you see that a lot of the time or you just see people who they were child actors. And then as they got older, I, for whatever reason, they stopped getting cast in roles. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe, maybe they, you know, maybe they were cute as a kid and then they were less cute as they got older. And it was like, right, we don't put yeah. them in movies anymore or whatever it is. Um, but not with Natalie Wood. She actually made that transition really well. Uh, she was in other movies like West Side Story, Splendor in the Grass, Rebel Without a Cause. She earned an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress for Rebel Without a Cause. Uh, she also re- received several other nominations for Best Actress in Splendor in the Grass and Love with a Proper Stranger. Another kind of unconventional acting thing she did, she actually worked across multiple genres, which was a little bit rarer back then. But she was in like comedies like Sex and the Single Girl and The Great Race and alongside being in dramas and musicals and all these things. So very um, versatile actress, mm-hmm. very like respected, renowned. Her personal life was a bit of a mess, but that's to be expected. Uh, <laughs> she had rumored romances with Elvis Presley and Tab Hunter. Hmm. And all of this was before she was like legal drinking age. Wow. Because she married... Uh, actor Robert Wagner in 1957 when she was just 19 years old. How old was he? Do you know? Robert Wagner was born in 1930s. He would have been 27. Okay. So he wasn't like, he wasn't like 50 when they got married, but he was older than her. No, he was a good bit older though. Still, Okay. You know, like I would, in this day and age, I would raise an eyebrow at that relationship because what is a 27 year old, which is, I'm a year older than that. I don't have anything in common with a 19 year old. Mm -hmm. Right. So, But different age, Hollywood, totally different lifestyle than what I live. That first marriage didn't last long. They divorced. Uh, After that, she dated other really popular guys at the time, like Warren Beatty and Frank Sinatra. She was briefly engaged to a shoe manufacturer named Ladislav Blotnik, but they called their wedding off in 1966. Three years later, she married Richard Gregson, the British producer, and they had a daughter named Natasha together. Hmm. They divorced three years after that in 1972. Later that same year, she remarried Robert Wagner, and oh. then they had a daughter named Courtney together. But Wood also struggled with depression and anxiety throughout her life. Um, obviously, I don't think it needs to be said that we didn't have the same understanding of those conditions back mm-hmm. then. 50 years ago. So I don't think she ever really got the proper treatment that she needed. Uh, And then in 1981, she'd been with Robert Wagner for, what, nine nine years now at this point. Okay. And that's sort of when her story comes to, like, a very tragic end. At the time, she was working on the movie Brainstorm with Christopher Walken. Oh. And on Thanksgiving weekend, Natalie Wood, Robert Wagner, Christopher Walken, and then the uh, captain of the yacht that they were on, the Splendor, Dennis Davern, they go on a little trip, and uh, things are not peachy. Robert Wagner's really jealous of the chemistry between Christopher Walken and Natalie Wood. He's a little bit suspicious of their relationship. The two of them seem to be very close. They were on an island drinking together all day before Wagner met up with them and he was already in a bad mood Hmm. when he got there. They went to a restaurant after that. There was an altercation. The accounts of that kind of differ. Employees don't remember if it was uh, Robert Wagner or Christopher Walken who threw a glass at the wall, but somebody did. And around 10 p.m., they all head back to the yacht. Oh, gosh. So they have to get on this boat together because there's like no other way to... Right. Oh, God. Yeah, Yeah, seems like like a bad idea. 
three people in this really complicated situation who are all famous, you know, so they all have something of an ego. Yeah. Two of them are working on a movie together. They're, you know, they have very good chemistry, which I'm sure is tough for any working like actors who are married. You see, right. you know. He looked really good with that guy in that movie. But like, yeah. Well, remember Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Everyone was like, wow, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie are so such good chemistry. And then it was like, mm. and now he's leaving Jennifer Aniston. And Right. Or even um, less drama filled, but uh, Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone, when they did Amazing Spider-Man together. Oh, yeah. They started dating and it was right. like, yeah, I mean, look at the way they interact on screen. Of course, they're dating. They ah, have to be. I forgot about that one. But uh, yeah, so understandably, Robert Wagner's like concerned here mm-hmm. but they th- think about it this way now it's it's 10 p.m they've been drinking all day long there's already been an altercation at this restaurant they're already angry and things are already tense they get back on board and there's another altercation robert wagner reportedly breaks a wine bottle mm. and threatens christopher walken with it asking him are you trying to fuck my wife yikes uh that gets sorted out christopher walken heads off to bed and then Natalie Wood and Robert Wagner are on the deck continuing to argue. So the captain, Davern, goes to check on them. And when he like comes up, he only sees Robert Wagner standing there, mm. who immediately turns to him and says, Natalie is missing. They begin to look for her, but Wagner's like being kind of dodgy. And he's like, hey, don't turn on the floodlights and don't call the Coast Guard. Boy, I don't want really to make this into a big deal. You know, I don't want it to become like a huh. a thing, right? Like, Boy, can, my like, wife we, is missing, yeah. but don't don't wow. make a big deal mm-hmm. about it. Yeah, so Very it's sketch. a little a little shady. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, they start looking for her, and then later in interviews, at first there was not a lot of detail shared with investigators. It wasn't for like decades after that. Davern sat down and was like, "Well." It's kind of weird because Natalie Wood was deathly afraid of water. God. Uh, The dinghy was also missing. So, you know, Robert Wagner's saying, like, she left, she got on the dinghy and left. But Mm. I don't know where she went. That's interesting. But Davern's like, "Ah, it's really weird that she would take the dinghy out on her own, though, because she was really afraid of the water. And then a woman on a different boat about 80 feet away said that she heard a man and woman shouting at each other around 11 p.m. So timelines kind of lining up here. After which she hears a woman yelling, somebody, please help me. I'm drowning. That's horrible. And she didn't. What did this woman do? I mean, she's in a boat 80 feet away and it's like very dark. Yeah, I guess. So I don't know. I don't know what she does, but it's not a good look for her to be like, well, I heard two people yelling at each other. And then I heard the woman scream, somebody help me, I'm drowning. And then for Robert Wagner to be like, I don't know where she went. That looks, yeah, sketch all around. Like if this other woman heard this, you would have too, obviously. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. About two hours pass before Robert Wagner finally acquiesces and is like, fine, we can call for help. So it's like 1.30 in the morning. They finally make the call to the Coast Guard. And even then, still nobody can find her body. It wasn't Mm. until like hours later when the sun had started to rise, they find her. She died of drowning. But weirdly, she was only wearing her nightgown. Hmm. And her family members, like her sister and her mother, were like, that's weird. If she was leaving to go, like, you know, to get off the boat to go back to the mainland or whatever, she wouldn't have gone in just a nightgown. She would have gotten dressed. Yeah. And I will say to, you know, play devil's advocate or to give Robert Wagner maybe a little bit of leeway here. If you're drunk and you're in the middle of this like intense argument and you just want to get away, you're also probably not going to take the time to go and change and do your yeah, hair. Yeah, if you're and, angry and just, yeah, I want I, I could right. I could see that happening. Right. So it it's important to point out that her family was like, it's weird. It's also important to be a little fair and be like, well, it would be weird if she were done up after yeah. this argument. Yeah, maybe she would have grabbed like a life vest, but maybe not if she was just like, I'm out of here. Right. So it's important to note the difference here because that was 1981. Davern said that he wasn't fully forthcoming about what happened on board the ship. Yeah. I think Christopher Walken was maybe a little bit hesitant too. He said that he and Robert Wagner got into a small beef. I think Robert Wagner was upset about how long their shooting schedule was keeping Natalie Wood away from their children. Hmm. And Walken stepped in and 
whatever they squashed the beef quickly allegedly yeah but you would think it's like she drowned after this big argument with her husband and sort of a very dramatic yeah. day they might be like hmm. well and if but if everyone's downplaying the argument and right. it's robert wagner who's a very prominent actor you know people weren't held accountable back then like yeah. they are today you know we people can cry cancel culture all they want but i think it's you know, it's good to hold a murderer potentially <laughs> accountable if they are one. Yeah, there was no like public. Well, I don't know. Maybe there was like some sort of some form of public uh, pressure right. or curiosity about it. But it wasn't like social media could inflame that. Right. You would have just read in the newspaper that Natalie would drown. And you'd be mm-hmm. like, oh, that's so sad. And you'd probably move on with your. Yeah. Day. But that the interesting thing, though. So they initially classified it as an accidental drowning. 30 years later, they update the death certificate and change it to drowning and other undetermined factors. Mm. So that's where things start to get really interesting. That is around the time that Davern actually opened up about those details that he left out back in 1981, which included the arguments on board the ship that night. The following year in 2012, L.A. County Sheriff's Office reopens the case, citing new evidence. The main reasons for suspicion, they say, are conflicting accounts of the night's events, the arguments between Wood, Wagner, and Walken, the delays in reporting Wood missing, and bruises that were on her body, suggesting Mm. a possible physical altercation. Six years after that, in 2018, Robert Wagner is officially named a person of interest. No official charges were filed against him. He maintains his innocence to this day, and that's kind of where stands it's like an unsolved crime potentially gosh it feels like even if i mean you have a note about maybe like in the future technology but i'm not really sure what technology could help yeah it's just like people have to say what they saw or they don't in this case because there are there's so few witnesses on this boat in the middle of the water yeah yeah that's disturbing. Right. And then I've seen, you know, people online theorizing, oh, well, maybe Christopher Walken knows more than he's sharing. But by all accounts, he was not, you know, he went to bed early or he was not present with them on the deck of the yacht anymore when this happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it is a thing of like only these people were there in this very small scene and Natalie Wood is dead so that they could say whatever they want about what happened, have each other's backs. Right. And there's no way to get her account of anything. Mm hmm. It's and it's sad though. She was forty three, not old by any stretch of the imagination. There, uh, still at the height of her career. Like even the recent updates are like this one from April twenty, April of this year, twenty twenty four. Actor on West Side Story, Russ Tamplin, still said he believes there's more to the story of Nana Lewis drowning. Hmm. But yeah, I don't know if there's ever going to be a way to conclusively say what happened for sure that night yeah i think i i think joan didion wrote about her too i think she was she was a very popular like person in like hollywood so yeah 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 she's a big deal yeah yeah wow it's really scary it's like not even like her status and her her stardom couldn't protect her from like whatever happened that night yeah well i mean there's always someone right like more famous who can keep story hushed yeah more famous more powerful which is what people are you know saying of Robert Wagner, like there's other people who have said, like, uh, I can help but think of the time when I saw R.J. Wagner lash out at her during an innocent game of truth, uh, where she chose an Academy Award over their marriage, was what Tamblin said. So, you know, people paint this image of Robert Wagner as angry, maybe hmm. abusive. Of course, Robert Wagner's always denied this. He yeah. said, yeah, it's true. I did lash out at her about this in a documentary. About the uh, truth thing. Their daughter, Natasha, said for so many years, we were advised to ignore or not talk about it, referring to her mother's death. But enough is enough. I know that if my mom had been in any kind of distress, he would have given his life for her. Hmm. So she's coming to the defense of her father. It's true, he said. She said that because she knows me and she knows that I never would have done anything to hurt her mother. Hmm. Wow. And he's still alive. He is still today. He's 94. No way of knowing for sure. There's definitely it was definitely weird that he was not more seemingly distressed and urgent about everything. But again, I could see if she was like, you know, like, screw you. I'm taking this dinghy and getting back to shore. He'd be like, whatever, go then. And then, 
you know, it's like, don't yeah. look for her. She's doing her own thing. I don't know. But I, I think the whole thing is very suspicious and sketchy. Right. And for him to say Natalie is missing, not Natalie Oh, that's left, true. That's a good point. Is too. a very weird thing to say as well. Yeah. But, that's you know, true. it's not, am I, you know, my job's not to uh, cast blame or get the pitchforks ready or anything. I'm just mm-hmm. saying. No, just tell the story. Yeah. I mean, very there were enough strange. discrepancies in the story that they reopened an investigation 30 years later. Right. Yeah. So they clearly found something wrong. There are so many or maybe not so many, but there are a, a significant, significant number of like Hollywood mysteries like this of like, you know, I think they have obviously the added uh, allure of celebrities and uh, wealth and um, beautiful people whose lives seem perfect. And then things like this. Right. Wow. What right. a dark, dark note. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's just uh, it shows you kind of how little has changed in Hollywood, even in the wake of a lot of cultural shifts and pushback. It's like, you know, these these things, I, the quiet on set documentary, a really good example. It's like these things still happen. Right. These yeah, bad things still true. happen in Hollywood and they get hidden and they get pushed aside and they get snuffed out by money or influence or power or whatever it is i mean john landis had that incident on the twilight zone set where he had children working and oh. hours children shouldn't have been, and you know he got away with that he they the court found him not guilty of like manslaughter mm-hmm. um, but it's like but you look at those conditions you're like how could he possibly not have been Right. Yeah. These things still happen. It's good to talk about them. And I think Natalie Wood's case is a really interesting one because it's like, wait, how could they not have investigated Robert Wagner back in 1981 Mm -hmm. for this? Like, yeah, just taking his word for it seems like. Right. Very strange. But when he's when he's Robert Wagner, when he's this big, popular, really successful, influential guy, Mm -hmm. you get away with it. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's a really interesting story. I, like I said, I didn't know too much about it or about Natalie Wood or anything going into this. And then it is a really fascinating story. It is. Especially when someone is as, like, big as she was, too, for them to just kind of suddenly die in mysterious circumstances. It's like, whoa, how'd that happen? Right, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm trying to think of other examples of like of like uh, murder specifically or people going missing. Because so I was thinking of like Marilyn Monroe is another died young, you know, right. um, so famous and but uh, Sharon Tate. Oh yeah, Sharon Tate. That's a good one. Yeah, Hollywood uh-huh. is a really fascinating uh, subject. I think just because of the veneer, it's so beautiful, and then, like what goes on beneath it is so sinister sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's and it's even more gruesome when it's like Natalie would died in mysterious circumstances. It could have been murder as opposed to like, you know, someone who has this very public downfall or like downward spiral, like Amy Winehouse or Aaron Carter, when they die young, you're like, well, the writing was on the wall for a little bit there. I think we all saw could this. see it coming. Yeah. But like, then you have somebody like, like Sharon Tate or like John Lennon or Marvin Gaye, these people who are like, actually yeah. like taken out by yeah, other people that's, that's ahead true. of the time it's so shocking it's almost unbelievable right right yeah well that's our story for this week not exactly the most uplifting but hope if you're listening you enjoyed this nonetheless and if you want to get in contact with us about anything we discussed today you can either leave us a voicemail uh, by calling 929-526-3029 or you can email us at podcast at all is interesting dot com. Yeah. And if you want to read more about uh, Natalie Wood's death, we have an article on all that's interesting dot com about that. We also have dozens of other hundreds of other, perhaps even thousands of other <laughs> articles. I think we have 10,000 articles on the site, that's, actually. That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that on WordPress. We're updating them every single day. We're posting mm-hmm. new things. We're you know, going back and reworking old things if new information comes up. So yeah, go on over to all that's com if you are curious about reading any of the stuff that we talked about here, anything adjacent or perhaps something more uplifting. Um, you can also join our newsletter by going to all that's com slash sign up 
or become a member at allthatsinteresting.com slash membership. For $5 a month, you get an ad-free experience on the website, a dark mode if you're, you know, one of those people who likes to read late into the early hours of the morning, or you can also get little bonus podcast content as well. We used to do, if you've been listening for a while, History Happy Hour here on the main feed. But since we've kind of restructured to this bi-weekly release schedule, we now uh, do that as a little bonus at the end of episodes like this one. Yeah. So if you're curious to hear about that and stay caught up on all of your history news and historical anniversaries, for five bucks a month, you can do that. Yeah, and that's coming up after this episode for members. And it's a a special episode of History Happy Hour because we're joined by another writer, which is an exciting event. Amber, our our Gen Z representative. Our Gen Z representative. Yeah, (laughs) so that was great. And uh, yeah, you should should become a member and tune into those. Otherwise, we'll be back in two weeks as normal with uh, an episode about dogs who were involved in in 9-11 yeah the 9-11 search and rescue dogs that yes pay a little tribute to the uh unsung heroes of the search and rescue effort yeah i think it'd be an interesting angle of the story looking forward to digging into that yeah and in the meantime if you're hankering for more uh <laughs> you can also follow us on social media or on instagram at history history uncovered podcast we're on tiktok at real history uncovered and we're on youtube and we're constantly posting, you know, short clips from the podcast there as well. So you can spread the good word, share them with your friends, say, hey, take a minute out of your time. Check this out. What do you think? Yes. Until next time. Sayonara. Until next time. Until next time.